please state your name? Jeff Hornacek. Beep, beep, beep. Scan complete. Your current evaluation is negative 42. You owe us money. What? How do I owe you money? Current blood alcohol content is... Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I got it, I got it. Hey guys, welcome in to the Bro Force Squad podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Hornacek. We're just a bunch of bros drinking beer, watching movies, and in this case, television. With me, as always, is the mad scientist, Brian Banner, here to review Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, Episode 3, titled Fear and Loathing on the Planet of Kitson. As always, shout out Let's to Trent go. Pimp. Shout out to Trent Pimp, who joins us for every episode. Now, Banner, before we even dive into the four... Uh, Row four squad criteria that we grade every TV show on, which is the acting, the story, our favorite scene, and then any theories or questions we have. I gotta say, when I read the title and synopsis of this episode, I was like, I don't know, man, that sounds really fucking stupid and outlandish, even for this show. But uh, I think you and I can both agree, maybe we were just in the right frame of mind, but this episode was a blast. For sure. I... I didn't read the synopsis, but I read the, the episode title, and I was like, this is either going to be the best episode Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has ever had or the worst episode. <laughs> and not even a bold statement, this is the best episode. So much fun. At least the most fun episode. It, it was definitely the most fun. During it, the uh, Hydra season, there were some really fucking cool episodes. That's true. Those were a little bit more serious. This one just absolutely, it was 100% very, very enjoyable. And it, it also advanced the story quite a bit i thought um in a weird way but let's get into it cast blanket everybody was great stand out stole the fucking show enoch dude joel stoffer as enoch yeah god damn did he destroy it that he was, was incredible. so fucking cool <laughs> i was just digging everything he was doing and then a guy who i've shit on like not to deke level proportions because we don't get as much of him but uh Maximilian Osinski, who plays Davis, he was great in this episode. This is how like, I like my Davis. Just <laughs> fucking tripping balls. Tripping balls. That's the best version of Davis. I don't know, man. They took a lot of risks with the tone and humor in this episode. I watched this episode with my fiance, who's never seen an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and she was loving it. It was, like, cracking her up. And Davis was working, man. Again, maybe I think this is going to be polarizing. I don't think there's going to be many people in the middle. You're either going to have loved this episode or hated it, and you and I just both loved it. It, <laughs> so was, you, it was awesome. It honestly you, makes me want to go and watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> if you hated this episode, I get it. Like, as a purist of the show, it was a bit of a departure. But, I mean, we're six seasons in, dude. They got to keep it fresh somehow, and that's exactly what this felt like to me. It was kind of like... Not on the same scale. I'm not making that comparison, but it was like a Thor Ragnarok to the series, right? It was like, yep. let's infuse it with some levity, make it lighthearted, not take ourselves like overly serious for one episode and just see how it works. And to me, this all played perfectly. It totally perfect. fucking worked, dude. Because uh, Sky was a character, real quick before we move on, that's been very, very morose and serious the last two seasons, and they finally let Chloe Bennett, like, let her hair down a little bit and have some fun. And Gemma, maybe one of the two or three times ever on this show that she's kind of enjoyed herself, and it was just, it was good to see, man. It was like, let these actors do stuff like this. Well, and I really like what they did. This is going into story a little bit, I guess, but letting uh, Sky and Gemma start to, like, you really see their bond. Like, you've always seen flashes of it, but, like, you get that college were drunk in the fucking laundry room fucking oh, event. Yeah. Like, and, and right on the story and plot, I think uh, that played even better because of their kind of feuding at the end of last episode and the beginning of this one. And so really, the, the one it's kind of one storyline we're focused on here because Sarge and his team aren't shown until the very last episode. Um, so we have Fitz using Enoch as basically like his rain man. <laughs> <laughs> on the planet Kitson. Like his Dustin Hoffman to help him win at casino games. And then obviously Sky and Gemma are hunting Fitz. And they, them and Hunter, uh, or excuse me, Davis, are all tripping balls the whole time. So what did so you think of the story and the plot? 
first off, the again, I can't say enough. The fact that they were tripping balls the entire episode just fucking worked. It was awesome. You saw it coming a mile away whenever Enoch was like, hey, you can't eat those as a human. And then they were like, okay, I'll have one. <laughs> and I laughed so hard with their, like, trip when Gemma and, and uh, I guess this is the best scene. We'll go on to that later. But uh, it, it all worked really, really well. We saw the relationship between uh, Gemma and Sky. Like, yes, families fight. We're best friends. We fight. We disagree. And in a situation like that, I mean, it happens on the pod here all the time. Like, oh, I'm in charge of this part, blah, 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 blah. But then... 10 minutes later we just do a bunch of shrooms and everything is fine and we're best friends again uh that was an analogy just actually happens yeah that's just fact um so it's it's a lot of fun to see see them continue to grow that relationship which is hard to do after six seasons to continue to grow relationships together um the fact that they're on a okay star wars I need you guys to take a look at this episode and go, this is how you do a Canto fucking Bright casino. Canto should have been. I was thinking that the whole time. God damn it. This is how you do a fucking casino scene. Ryan Johnson, take note. Um, but, but actually don't because I don't need you trying to do Star Wars anymore. No, no. You should just go and do, I don't know, something in the Knives forest. Knives out. Yeah. Something in the forest. <laughs> um, again, everything worked for me. I know we said this last episode, uh, and I think you you kind of harped on it. The Gemma and Fitz just barely missing each other every single Ugh. time. It, you hate it, dude. I maybe it was just because I was having so much fun in this episode. I was like, oh my god, they're finally gonna get like get back together. I know, dude. And that and then it I'll... happened, and I was I actually felt disappointed. And not in the way like, ugh, we're doing it again. Like, oh man, I really really wish they would have happened. See, so that's the one thing I'm going to harp on negatively about this story, because this episode was like a 9.8 out of 10 for me. It was nearly flawless. But that trope is getting so fucking old, dude. Like, it's been played out on this show a million times. They've already done it once this season. And with Them a, with a shortened season, they need to get on with it. I mean, we're, we don't, we're not getting the 23, 24 episodes that we've gotten in the past. We're getting, what, 15 Something like Something that. Like Trent Pimp, correct us how many it is. But the thing with me is, like, you can only rip them apart, Gemma and Fitz, so many times before we just become numb to it, right? Like, the season with uh, us, well, you've fucking seen it all if you're listening to this, but where Grant Ward drops Fitz into the ocean at the end of, I think, season two, and you think he dies. Man, that, you felt that, like him and Gemma finally profess their love to each other and they get ripped apart. At this point, this has happened so many times that I'm just like, I'm numb to it, dude. I can't, I can't even feel this pain anymore just because it's been done over and over to me. And I don't want to say it's annoying, but it's just like, if they think there's still any water in that well, it's dried up, you know, like, I just stop, please. There's so much other great things happening on this show. We don't need to keep playing that out. Agreed. Couldn't have said it better myself. Can we get on a scene? Because it's going to be, the yeah. whole, it, I mean, we're going to have a best I mean, scene we and then have... we're going to have like eight honorable mentions. <laughs> so yeah. What are your best scene or scenes? Um, I honestly think, I don't even know, man. Like right, I me... loved, yeah, go with your best scene. and then I'll... All right. So a couple, the first one, Sky and Gemma high as fuck uh, at the bar under the table. Yeah, like not when they're on top of the table, under the table. Right, and you and I uh, in college, my junior year, your sophomore year, that house that we lived in with uh, Brent Berry, that was you and me in our laundry room. Remember, we'd have a party, we'd get shit-faced, and then we would go in there and just like to talk about God knows what, like our deepest, darkest secrets in that laundry room. <laughs> and I don't remember any of it. I don't either. I just remember that it was it, it was an important place. It was like our treehouse. It was. It was. It was awesome. Um, but I think that's what make that scene so great is everybody that has a best friend and has gotten fucked up with them, whether it's on these little cream puff things that they did or it's alcohol or, or something more hard than that. Everybody's had a moment like that where you just get fucked up with your best friend and you have that connection and that bond forever. Everybody can relate to that scene. And that's what made it so good. And it didn't help that it was funny as shit. Right. And then my other best scene, honorable mention, uh, the one that followed that, when Sky was fucked up and tried to, like, quake those guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then adding on to that, when she was fucked up but still kicked those dudes' asses when they came in uh, looking for fits. That whole scene, again, I was just, like, edge of my seat. I cannot get enough of this. 
it peaked at that point. That was the the pinnacle of the episode. And, and again, it all just worked. If you didn't like that stuff because it was totally a big shift, I get it. But everything was hitting the mark for me. So I don't know that I necessarily have best scenes, but I have some great lines that I really liked. So <laughs> when they're walking, when, and this may even be the best scene, when Gemma and Sky are walking down that flight of stales, stairs, again, we can all relate to just having to buck up and go, I got to dominate this shit, otherwise I'm going to get fucking arrested. And they kind of stop halfway through and they go, yeah, I only had one of those or whatever. They're like, Davis had six. Guys, I've <laughs> been the dude that's had six. I don't know if it's awesome or not, but it's awesome. And it goes back to Davis and he can like speak to colors. It's, oh, it's, Jesus. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. He can, he can taste colors and see food or something like that. I don't know. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. Um, another one was when after the hunter dude, which I'm not really sure we didn't really get into that, who the fuck this guy is and why he's there. But when, after he like hacks their computer and Davis shoots <laughs> And then he goes, ah, he evaporated. I almost got him. No. And she's like, you fucked up our tr- computer system. You shot system. our computer system. He goes, yeah, but where did he go? Like, like I, It's like, what do you mean, yeah, but where did he go? That doesn't answer any question we've asked. That Davis like, well, he wins this round. That was really, I mean, just all of all of that just worked for me. Um, I, the Enoch and Fitz being best friends, not being best friends, I thought was an interesting idea um, because obviously they've been through some shit together and you're going to have some sort of bond. It's kind of like, kind of like a guy and his dog. But if your dog was a super smart, super computer, um, which mine is. Yeah. So some of their, some of their interactions, like him talking about bluffing um, worked for me too. I kind of like that when they're sitting at the bar. Um, And then when Fitz is, we alluded to in our cold open when Fitz was getting a scanned body scanned, um, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. And Enoch mentions that like that he's a big, big hit with the ladies. <laughs> that was pretty. There was just a shit ton of good. The middle, the second act of this episode, if you will, was just loaded with. Might it be, might have been the second best second act of an episode <clears throat> in the history of the show. Quite possibly, and maybe that's hyperbole, but it definitely felt like that tonight. All right, last part: theories or questions. So now this one for me doesn't really do much in terms of either. I mean, there's some people who show up that I'm wondering who the fuck they are and who they're working with. Um, case in point, the avatar finger guy who comes and grabs fits at the very end. Who is he working with? Why does he want fits? My prediction is somehow he's working with Sarge and his team, but I don't have anything to base that on. It's purely circumstantial. And the fact that they are both so far, the two main antagonists that we've met this season How about you? Any thoughts on that or anything else that you were like, huh? Yeah, I didn't think of that until you had mentioned it, um, but I definitely see that possibility uh, happening. I'm really curious why Fitz and Enoch were wanted, Um, because obviously they've done something to become wanted and everybody is looking for them. And it can't be what they did on the ship the previous episode, right? That's just like pirate life, kill or get killed. It's got to be, it's got to be for, I think it goes back to before Fitz was cryogenically, that's not the right word. It's close enough though. I know what it is. We all know what you meant to say. Um, Before that happened and their ship got cut in half. I mean, obviously somebody was hunting them at that point too. Was it these hunters or or the the finger guy? Um, I don't know. And can Enoch do the little evaporation thing that that guy can do? Because they're both Chromacons. Yeah, so they did establish that that guy's a Chronicon. Yes, they said he said that because okay. he was like, I'm an anthropologist Chromacon, and that guy's a hunter Chromaga. Got it. Because if Enoch's been holding back on his powers this whole time, like that's not cool. Yeah, that's a little fucked up, man. And you're supposed to be best friends. <laughs> yeah, WT fuck. Um, another one that I had. The uh, machine at the very end that Sarge uses, what do you think that is? Because it highlighted – it seemed like the ma- like five of the biggest cities in the United States. And he was like – what did he say afterwards? Something to the effect of like, all right, now we know where to go or something. Yeah, we know we know where to hunt it or where to find it, something along those lines. Um, he also – like he alluded to something like I've seen better but I've seen worse. So it makes me think that it's something that maybe we've seen before in the show. Maybe when he was talking about the stars, right? 
uh, well, when he was talking about the stars, but I think he also was talking about the things that they like located, too. Okay, I thought he said that before they launched the little. I map. thought he said. That I think he said. It, I don't know. To be honest with you, I've, I've drank a six pack tonight. So either way, though, he can probably read some of that stuff. Like, what does that mean? Is he from a different? We still don't know. Different time or just a different part of the yeah, galaxy? Different dimension. I don't know. I still think that somehow. Somehow the people that are in deep space tripping on shrooms are going to have to morph through concrete walls the way that Sarge and, and his people did. Um, but more importantly, we need to get we need to get to the monkey in the room or the elephant in the room here. Your boy's back next week. How but excited like, are you? Well, he's got a knife to his throat in D, because you're referring to. So at that pr- concept or, or promise, I am fairly excited because there's a chance he might get cut. He's not going to get cut, dude. He's he's in the main – like he's dude, a main character now. Even just his acting in that one scene. Cool scene. I was like, shut the fuck up, Deke. <laughs> I can't stand him. It's incredible how much I love everyone else on this show and how much I hate Deke. Can you imagine Deke tripping on shrooms? He'd be insufferable. <laughs> just that's it. That's all he, you have I'm to say. Glad, <clears throat> I'm glad he wasn't in it because he would have ruined this episode for me, really. Yeah, he would have. I, I am kind of glad to see, though, I, as much as we do hate him, we do shit on him. It has been. I mean, we're three episodes in, and we haven't seen him yet. So it's, I'm I, I'm curious to see what his character has been up to, being from the future now that he's back on Earth. And I mean, he's had beer, he's eating hamburgers now. Like, what what's he up to? Probably just drinking more Zimas, right? <laughs> That's what's up right there. Bitch. Uh, um. Real last thing I had. I don't know if you had any thoughts on this. Trend pimp, chime in here if I'm way off. But when Sarge shot that device up into the sky, I initially thought it was going to actually teleport that Chronicon that grabbed Fitz down to Earth. Like I thought they were like working together, and it was some other sort of portal. Ooh. Did you have any inkling of that? No, I thought he was gonna start some sort of like pulling some sort of star or asteroid or planet down towards the earth. Um, it. Or it was going to like bring like dinosaur bones or fossils or some sort of, of rare resource from the ground up. Um, like he was yeah, like, shooting what... an umbrella up because that's what on the, that video last episode or the episode before it kind of alluded to that before they were like, ah, oh, we got to get the fuck out of here because we blew the place up. So I thought that, that cannon gun thing was going to trigger that event. So when it didn't, I was a little uh, surprised, I guess. Yeah, because we still don't know what they want um, and, like, why they're having to teleport these people in. Like, we don't know any of their motives. Literally all we know is one guy looks like Coulson. And has his DNA. And the other dude likes to huff pens oil. Yes. That's been made abundantly clear. <laughs> All right, Banner, any last thoughts on Season 6, Episode 3 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I hope that it continues to get stronger and stronger, just like this episode was. This was a great, fun episode. And I think if you're going... This is hard to say, but I think if you have somebody that's never seen the show before, don't show them this episode, because they're going to be sorely disappointed from all the other episodes. Yeah, because tonally it was... It was completely different, completely different, even though we enjoyed it as fans and we needed that kind of that fresh look. And, I, and I'm perfectly fine if they go back to, you know, a little bit more serious like they are traditionally in the next episode. It was a breath of fresh air and it was a much needed um, break from where where they are traditionally. Yep. Very well said. Cannot even add on to that. And on that note, for the mad scientist Brian Banner, I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro4 Squad podcast. Thank you for checking us out. Check out all of our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reviews. We do movie commentaries, episodes of our podcast where we talk movies and TV shows. Uh, and then, of course, reviews of movies as well. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Spotify if you type in Bro4 Squad. That's three separate words, and those same three words typed into letterbox.com. You can read all of our movie reviews and also follow us on Twitter at Bro4Squad. Thank you guys, and we will catch you next time on the Planet Kitson. Just spot me like a 20, dude. I'm really good at this game. I'm, dude, I'm hot. I'm hot right now. <laughs> we gotta play the hot hand. We're losing money if we don't. This 
state your name. Jeff Hornacek. Beep. Beep. Scan complete. Current value is negative 12. You owe us money. Negative? Yeah. How do I? Mm-mm. Sorry. No, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Cut. Do it from the top. Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. We were scan complete. You owe us seven chips. How do I owe you money? Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. <laughs> scan complete. You owe us money. What you're supposed to pay me though? How do I owe you money? Blood alcohol content is oh, okay. above yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, I got the it. legal. Top, here's the thing. Fitz, excellent leader. Great mind. Great strategist. Good scientist. Physicality-wise, he's not quite there. That's why I knock him down second ground grade. Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. Beep. Scan complete. Current value is negative 17. What? Negative? How? You suck at everything. Ah, fuck, that's a good point. Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. Beep. Beep. I fucked up. I got I got too caught up on the on the That's okay. Noises. You're trying to you're experimenting and that's fine. Yeah, that's it didn't feel right. Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. Beep. Beep. Scan complete. Current blood alcohol content. I fucked up. My bad. That's I okay. skipped a line. Skipped a line. Please state your name. Jeff Hornacek. Scan complete. You owe us money. How do I owe you money? You're supposed to pay me. You suck at everything. Fuck, that's a good point. (laughs) (laughs) You suck at everything. Damn it. So fucking stupid. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, though.